there's no justice for them because justice would mean Dante not being killed. So the only thing they can ask for, Stefante, is full accountability. When we think about this moment, Naisha, everyone continues to ask the family, well, are you satisfied with the charges? What do you think of the charges? All we can do is say we're making progress. The journey to justice is a long one. If you consider apples to apples, Attorney Storms, you had Officer North here in Hennepin County He shot a white woman, Justine Diamond. Apparently it was in a dark alley. He shot and killed her. He showed great remorse, said it was an accident, did not mean it. He was charged with third-degree murder and convicted of third-degree murder and sentenced to 12 and a half years. Now present before us, we have Officer Potter, a white police officer, kills an unarmed black man, and she's charged with second degree manslaughter. Whereas we understand that if convicted, she can get between four and 10 years. All this family is striving for is to get full accountability, to get equal justice, nothing more or nothing less. This family know that really, as Aubrey and Katie talked to Attorney Storms and I about what is the most time she could get? What are the highest charges after they met with the district attorney? They concluded that really there's no justice for them because justice would mean Dante not being killed. So the only thing they can ask for, Stefante, is full accountability. As Naisha so eloquently stated, accountability to the highest level. That's all they can ask for. That's all they can request. That's all they can demand. And so they will do that because Dante Wright life matter. You think about Officer Orr and his circumstances. And then you think about Officer Potter and the circumstances of her killing Dante Wright. And the illustration is just so graphic. You didn't have all of this. You did not have all of this in Officer Noah's situation. It was daylight. You see a a gun, a taser, a Glock 17, and a taser. So it's very difficult for this family to accept that this is an accident when you have a veteran who's been on the police force for 26 years. And we still believe that it was over-policing. It was an excessive use of force because we have a propensity in America to over-police marginalized minorities, especially black men. 
And again, we're, we're trying to compare apples to apples. If you go to my Instagram page, and I, I, people have been doing it a lot, at Attorney Crump, we have three videos of young white men not only resisting the police, but they are assaulting and battering the police. They have weapons. They reach for a gun. And yet, the police still don't shoot those young white men. In fact, in some of the videos, the police actually retreat. They run from the white men. So why is it in every instance that the police engage in the most excessive force with black people? Think about what we just witnessed in Virginia with the Army veteran. Most of our white brothers and sisters who get pulled over by the police, they give them a ticket. And then they go on their way. But for some reason, marginalized minorities are made to submit. I don't know what it is in the mentality of police officers that they want black people to submit to their will. 